So I want to do some Q&A with you because I asked my team, like, give me some tough questions. What's on the minds of people out there? Like the question about video or some of our friends from around the world, like what they're dealing with. So I want you to do me a favor in your notes, go to a blank piece of paper. Because I think every one of the questions that my team has reached out here is going to impact every single person watching. So Vinny Capella from Sao Paulo, Brazil, right? He asked, I'm trying to implement a lot of what I learned from you in my market. I'm in Brazil. But there's a lot of things that you say that are unseen here. My question is, is there such a thing as being too soon? I mean, should I wait to implement or just go for it and really be in front of everybody? So first of all, Vinny from San Paulo. Welcome, my friend. Thank you for being here. I appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Yes. Thank you so much, my friend. And listen, by the way, if you don't know somebody in San Paulo, you now do. What's your Instagram handle, buddy? Where can we follow you? It's Capella with double L, Vinny, V-I-N-I. All right. I hope you just picked up like 8,000 followers. So Capella, C-A-P-E-L-L-A, Vinny on Instagram. Let's follow this guy and let's see what he's doing. So Vinny, here's the thing. Like you're talking to somebody who is probably a little more crazy than the average. I actually like going out and not in every case being first, but I want to do it the best, the fastest, the most aggressive when I know it's the right thing. Now, do you like music? Do you like music? Mm -hmm. Okay, so, so my sort of musical icon is David Bowie. Right? And it wasn't that he created all this music that I, you know, I love. I got all the records. I got it's all over my iPhone. It's like my go-to music, right? Because it just warms me up and fires me up. But what I really love, and yes, the song changes is perfect. What I loved about David Bowie is how he evolved over time. That he saw a trend like I shared this morning and he went after it. And whether it was going from this sort of folk singer, right, who wasn't doing very well at all, had a couple hits, but never really made it on the charts, to doing this outlandish Ziggy Stardust, which is like some of our friends watching right now, starting to do videos like Phil Gertis. You with me? It would be that kind of a transformation for them. So my advice to you is this, go at it hard. You with me? Which means you got to have a CRM. You with me, guys? In San Paulo, I guarantee there's no transaction coordinators. There's probably no marketing coordinators. There's no, is there MLS? No, right? No, not at all. We don't have any data. They have, they have Nothing. no data. It's like when I come to, you know, to your part of the world, it's like when I go to Europe 10 years ago, no MLS, no systems, no process. Nobody talks to anybody. You take a listing. No other agents want to sell the listing. Everybody tries to sell it on their own and get all the commission. Does this sound familiar? Okay, so I'm, I'm with you, brother. So you ready? I want you to go hard. I want you to build a team. You with me? I want you to take on other young individuals like yourself, right, that can want to build something great. I want you to take everything from our ecosystem and start implementing it and be the first. The number of clients I have around Europe that are now making 800,000 euros, a million euros, which when I started in Europe 10 years ago, nobody was talking about. Everybody was kind of mom and pop in their own little town and kind of like in your town, right? Real estate has become more of a thing the last 20 years and the profession more the last decade. But in Europe, you don't want to know why most people got into real estate in Europe? Kind of like your town. They were like, well, my parents own this three-story building here in Italy. And you know what? We have a cheese store down below. And then mom and dad live here. And my brother and I live up here in the three-story house. And when the parents tragically passed away, the boys looked at each other and said, I don't want to sell cheese for the rest of my life. And they cleared out the cheese and they went into real estate in the same little three-story house. And that's how real estate's been done in your part of the world and throughout Europe for a hundred years. It's so ripe for you to go out and disrupt. It's so ripe for you to go out and do the things that we're discussing. So I'm asking you, go all in on content creation. Stand out. Be the most noticeable person in your town. You walk down the street, you walk down the beach, they're like, I want to see like literally girls going, oh, and taking selfies because they see you. You're Vinny. Look at that handsome guy over there. I see that guy everywhere. Hey. That, exactly. <laughs> Vinny, that's what I want you to do. Does that make sense? That's what I want you to do. Totally, totally. Now, I will tell you. Thank you, Tom. Of, of course. And do you speak Portuguese? Of course, yes. I do. Okay, I yeah. do not. Don't even go there, but I have, I've spoken in Portugal many times, and I usually learn like a, a word or two, usually the bad stuff. 
But I will tell you this, don't go it alone. Guardrails. Guardrails, Vinny. We coach yeah. people all over the world, brother. If we can help you, you let us know, right? I don't know if the 800 number works. You call my office, you figure it out. We'll put up those guardrails and someone like yourself where there's no competition. My client, Martine, who's probably watching right now, who, lived, who works um, just outside, what's the smoke a lot of pot town in Holland? Somebody help me out here. Amsterdam, thank you very much. Martine, yeah, smoke a lot of pot. Martine is killing it because the last couple of years, you know what he said? I'm gonna go in all in on video. I'm gonna do geographic farming outside of where he works and smoke a lot of pot. Sorry, Martine, right? But he's killing it now and he's becoming this dominant agent, building his little micro team, him and two other people on his team, doing all the videos. I think he's already done one falling in the pool, like the whole nine yards. And you know what? He's taken over. He's becoming the noticeable brand. So for you, I don't think you'll be first. I just think coming out of this, you're going to do it better than everybody else. Sound good? All right. Let's give Perfect. Vinny a big Thank round of applause, John. man. Thank you. I'm waiting for you to record a podcast with me. Oh, that's right. You did. Yeah, I got that DM. All right. We will make it happen. Give Vinny a nice round of applause. San Paolo in the house. Guardrails, brother, guardrails. We got Vinny, and Vinny, I'm not gonna try and say your last name, G-O-P-A-L-A-R-K-759, Christian, right? Uh, from Bolingbrook, Illinois, he said, oh, here it is. This is the question I've been waiting for. I am, the, am I in the wrong business? If being a content creator isn't my passion, it seems all this video first is really about content, and that's just not something I enjoy. How do I bridge the gap? So I don't know if Vinny is out there on video, but I want to be clear with you. Earlier when I was in this conversation, I did say to you, if you're not comfortable doing video, then you need to be resourceful and create a character. You need to create an image or an icon or a brand that represents you. Snoopy the dog selling insurance. You all with me on this? Tony the tiger selling his, you know, cereal box. You can do the same exact thing, right? Jill Biggs, who's watching right now in Hoboken, the team basically created like a character of Jill and that character would be out selling properties. That would be marketing properties. So what I want to say to you, Vinny, is it's not like, like I didn't buy it when back in 2006 and seven and eight when the re.net super nerdy, you know, techie guys were like, if you're not on Twitter, you're going to be out of the business in five years. That's not going to happen. If you don't do video, Vinny, you won't be out of the business in five years. That will not be the issue. All the stuff we discussed this morning, all of that will take you out. Video will just push you into the limelight to be on the consideration set of more people. So I would challenge you on this, brother. You probably need someone that can help you do this. In our ecosystem, we have masterminds and communities of people that are just like you that didn't want to do it and finally started. And what they do is they R&D everybody else and they find what works for them. Because Vinny, there's something about you that is magical, that can get out there. And you might be not as charismatic as, as a Phil Gertis or you know who you saw Janelle earlier talking about video and listings, but you're going to find your tribe. So either Snoopy character, character of you, you with me, but you got to do something because look up here, guys, everybody grab your phone and go like this. Grab your phone and go like this. I said it to you this morning, the very first trend, it's the on-demand economy and the consumer is going to find what they want and someone is going to deliver it in a magical way. And if you're not there, you're not there. Don't blame me. It's your business. I've been telling you to do this for a decade plus. The question is, when are you going to start? So this is actually a good, a really good question. I'm not sure if he's here. Uh, Lloyd Sprague, Seal Beach, California. Listen to this. Tom, I'm a new agent in Orange County with a limited budget. I appreciate that. Basically, all my extra funds after bills go to marketing, and it just feels like it's too much. What's up, Lloyd? Welcome, man. Good to see you, buddy. Ah. How you doing? I'm good, man. I'm good. Seal Beach, California. Love it. Uh, so ready? I know your coaching would multiply my business. I, I know it would. But with no extra money to spare on coaching, what would you suggest is the best way to leverage the little marketing dollars that I have? So I'm going to give you two considerations. You ready? How much, what's your marketing budget right now and, and where are you currently spending it? Like, give me some context. 
Uh, right now, I have about four hundred dollars a month for my marketing budget. Okay. I'm doing about a hundred dollars on Facebook ads, and then the remaining three hundred dollars, I'm going to start mar- uh, farming and doing dropping some flyers in the neighborhood. Okay. Um, I don't have the funds to mail them out, so I'm going to walk it myself and drop it. Okay, cool. Which company do you work with? First team. Dude, I know. Okay, I've known Camaraj. My, you know Camaraj, the founder of your company, and my dad oh. sold real estate in the same office together and competed in 1902. Like, no kidding, man. It's a small world. I was in Cam's <laughs> office just a year ago doing some consulting. He's a superhuman being. So, ready? Here's the good news. They provide a lot of free marketing. So, why are you spending any money on it? That's a good, tro- that's a good point. Yeah, they do provide a lot. They do provide a ton of, it's one of Cam's secret sauces as a company. So I would be taking all the free marketing and saving the 300 bucks. That's the first thing. The hundred dollars on Facebook ads, heads up. If you're boosting a listing, that's awesome. If you're boosting a piece of content, that's awesome. But if you're spending a hundred dollars a month trying to attract buyers and sellers on a hundred dollars a month, take the hundred dollars every month, light it on fire and forget about it. It's just not enough right? You're now competing, especially here in Orange County, against a lot of other people that are spending 10, 15, $20,000 a month, plus companies spending way more than that, plus Zillow, plus Trulia, plus Realtor, plus, 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 plus. Does that make sense? So here's what I would ask you to consider. Are you a newer agent? How long in the business? Uh, Only two and a half months, going on to three. Two and a half months, ladies and gentlemen, and he's here inside the summit. Give him a giant round of applause. Okay, first of all, I'm looking at my buddy Gantry Wilson, who is now a veteran, veteran, veteran. Gantry, this is like when I met you, except I think you were like two weeks in the business, right? Gantry, who by the way is in Huntington Beach, California, right? He's in Seal Beach. You should connect with Gantry here inside the ecosystem because Gantry would be an excellent role model for you. So when I met Gantry, now what, like 16, 17, this is our 17th summit, brother. Think about that. Like, from Miles Square Park, California, right? Doing a little gig at the golf course. By the way, two weeks into starting my business, I meet Gantry Wilson, a brand new agent, ready? And Gantry said like, hey, I'm new, I don't know what to do. I'm like, brother, you need to sign up for coaching. Now in fairness, Gantry, 17 years ago, I needed the money. I was a startup. I needed you to be a client so we can get out and kick ass. So God bless you and thank you for giving a startup a shot. I really do appreciate it. Now, my friend, I can tell you, figure out to put yourself in coaching because your coach, you know what they're going to do? They're going to say to you, hey, man, you got no budget? Awesome. Guess what you can do? Knock on doors, make phone calls, call expired listings, go after for sale by owners. You, like Jeff Mays, here's what he would tell you. All right. You're going to knock doors around every sale that wasn't yours. Knock, knock. Hi, Tom Ferry, First Team Real Estate. Another property just sold down the street. What do you guys think about the price? See, if a $10 million producer like Andy C can go, ding dong, real estate update, what could you do? How old are you, man? 24. Okay, married or single? Single. Kids, no kids. No kids. Puppy, cat, goldfish? Cat. The one and only. One and only. Okay. All right. So he has nothing else to do, right or wrong, my friends, than pour himself into his business. Brother, you put yourself in coaching. I'm going to give you my cell phone, and you and I are going to text every day between now and the end of the year. Mary Angel, do you remember when we did this? I'm looking at my friend Mary Angel over here who booked a hundred and like three or four appointments from the summit to the end of the year. You and I are going to do a similar challenge. But here's the deal. You know what I'm going to do? Right? Anybody remember David Goggins when I had David Goggins at the summit a few years back? Who remembers David Goggins, right? Right? So DG and I still text all the time. Extraordinary human being. David, if he was here right now, so if you don't know, former Navy SEAL, Army Ranger, They called him the fittest man in the world. He broke the world record for pull-ups, like 60,000 in 24 hours. And that is his theme song. Thank you very much. I'm basically going to be your David Goggins. You're going to have a coach. That's going to be separate. But you and I texting every single day. How many calls? How many leads? How many appointments? How many calls? How many leads? How many appointments? And I'm going to grind on you because you know what you need right now? Experience. Guess where experience comes from? Getting in the dirt, fighting the fight, getting punched in the face, learning how to duck, trying a different script, doing a different approach. That's how you get good. 
Artisans need to get into the work and do it over and over again. So whether you choose to do it or not, I don't care. I care about you, but I can tell you this, right? As someone that's brand new, looking at Gantry Wilson, the serendipity, you guys are down the street, I know the measurable impact is made for him and his family. And I know we can do the same and you can get all that marketing for free because I know your company. Does that make sense? Yeah, okay. definitely. So you're going to text me. I gave you my cell, 949-216-5466. And you're going to text me and say, I'm in. I called the number. I talked to somebody. Okay, I'm scared as shit. I put myself in coaching. I'm ready to go. You with me or not? But if you do, I'm we're going to... Okay, we're gonna start a massive accountability. And the good news is you're down the street from my office. So I just might make you come to my office like I did my friend Lori Eastman in Newport Beach who's watching somewhere who told me a story, you ready? End of the day of the summit, oh my God, I can see myself walking down the aisle and I see her and I'm like, Lori. Now what you don't know, and Lori, if you're out there, I'm telling the story, baby, I can't help it. Lori and her husband in the middle of the financial crisis dealt with the same thing that a lot of us dealt with, right? The fear and anxiety of money. And it's not like what we went through with COVID. It's very different, right? I mean, the economy completely collapsed. She was a single mom, three daughters. And guess what? Her husband's business was just going down the toilet. And one of her friends said, you should go into real estate, Lori. You'd be great. She's like, all right, I'll give it a shot. I got nothing to lose. And then we're all, because I, I met her socially through a friend. My buddy was like, hey, um, that guy over there drinking a margarita, that's not like the number one real estate coach on the planet. You should go talk to him. So, you know, we're chit-chatting and talking, total social, you know, just time around town. So she's telling me what's going on. And I'm like, look, I'm doing this event. You should buy a ticket. You should come and check it out. She sits through the four days and she has like the biggest epiphany. And what the epiphany was is she had a little necklace that she had a three on. And the three for her, Lloyd represented her daughters. And what I got her to understand was she would do anything for her daughters. And most parents would. I think many of us out there appreciate that. You'll know one day, my friend, if you choose to have children, what that means. But you know there is someone in your life that you would do more for than yourself. It could be a friend, it could be your parents, it could be a grandparent, right? It could be someone that you met at school, but there's always someone that we would do more for. And when Lori tapped into that, the first year, you know what I made her do? I made her come to my office because she was down the street. I gave her one of my sales desks and she stood there with her laptop open and I would just stand behind her and say, make another phone call, make another phone call, make another phone call. And guess what, my friends? She would call like usually her best friends and go, hey, it's Lori and I just wanted to check in and see how you're doing. Yeah, you know, I'm now selling real estate. Totally sucked at the script, was horrible, but thank God it was like, you know, her best friend who was like, is Tom Ferry standing behind you right now? Okay, I'll just act like we're doing this again because you've called me eight times in the last four days. I'm not kidding. But guess what? After two weeks, she was texting, she was calling. And because of our environment, everybody's on the phone, everybody's having all this fun. She starts doing it. And then guess what happens? All of a sudden, she goes out and does three deals her first year. And then it's like 12 deals. And then does 18 deals. Now she's making like eight or $900,000 a year. And you know what's great? Her older daughter, Carolyn's at USC. Her younger daughter just got into Georgia. She's got the money to pay for it. You with me? Her other daughter now coming up through the ranks of high school. She has blossomed as a human being. You want to know why? She just got somebody to get her over the fence. That's all it is. We all need a little help now and then. So guardrails, brother. Guardrails. And if you text me, game on, brother, because I'm going to kick your ass in the most loving way. You with me on this? And you're 24? Yeah, yeah. 24. You'll be hearing from me. <laughs> Dude, I love it. Cause listen, man, like I'm like half your age. I'm like an old Jedi compared to you. So I love this. <laughs> All right. How many of you guys think he's going to take on the hundred appointment challenge and crush it with me between now and the end of the year? <laughs> right on, dude. I'm proud of you, man. Good job. Good Thank job. Text me, talk to my team. Let me know what you do. All right. I got time for one last question. What are your thoughts on feedback around door knocking? Well, hello. By the way, I think all my coaching clients are now back in. They were at a whole bunch of breakout sessions. So hi, Catherine, how are you? 
Hi, how are you? I'm doing outstanding. I, I feel like I'm in your office slash gym because I think that looks like a life cycle or something behind you. Is that right? I yeah. love it. Uh, exercise bikes. So first of all, I want to say to you, thank you for being here from New York and hanging out with us. Where, so I don't, know, I, I don't know where are you? Are you in like Rye County, Rockland County, Westchester County? Like where is uh, Sayula set? And I know I'm horribly butchering that. Where is that? I work in Long Island. You're Long Island. Okay, perfect. Okay. I've done a lot of business in Long Island. I've got a lot of friends there. So you ready? Here's my thoughts on door knocking. Put a mask on. Ding dong. Real estate update. Wear gloves because some people will be freaked out. Does that make sense? Does that make sense? And when someone's really freaked out, just say, sorry, just wanted to give you the information and go to the next door and take nothing personally. Andy C., who you saw, who is a friend of mine and a client for 18 years, he's out doing it and the guy does $10 million a year in GCI. Now he's doing it right now in Silicon Valley. Ding dong, Andy C., real estate update. So I just want to stress to you, Safety first, follow the guidelines. If, if New York, because remember New York for a while was like, no phone calls till September. You guys remember that one? Right? right? So you got to be, res is everyone clear on what I just said? The entire state of New York was like, no more phone calls. You cannot call. Of course, all the political parties can call and all those people can call, but we can't call to generate business. So you had to pivot. You had to shift. I'd get out and knock on doors, just do it safely. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay, so tell me what's your commitment between now and the end of the year because winter is coming and it's going to get colder. So what are you committed to? A lot of listings. No, 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 that's super generic yeah. and, and I know what you mean. So how many listings will you get between now and the end of the year? 20. Okay, I'm calling BS. How many listings have you taken so far this year? Not enough. Okay. So how are you going to go from not enough to 20 between now and the end of the year? You certainly learned a ton the last couple of days, but specifically, what are you going to do? Be more consistent with my calls. Okay. But can you call in the state of New York? I guess September is officially here. Do they change the rule? I'm looking to like Doreen and some of my other New York City peeps, right? Doreen's like, I don't even know, right? Now you can call your past clients. You can call your sphere. You can follow up on your leads but you can't call around listings and sales right now because that would be breaking the law. So don't do that. Don't put your business in harm's way. But what else are you going to do? So you're going to make your calls to your database. What else are you going to do? Videos. Okay, good. How many per week? 20, 20, 30 videos a week. Okay, Catherine, can I do a be honest with you? Mm -hmm. There's the pressure of being on a Zoom session like this, right? Or in a video session like this in the middle of all this with all these people watching. Here's what I'm sensing. I think you're telling me what you think I want to hear versus what you know you're going to do. Do you get the difference? Mm -hmm. I want you to be wildly successful. And I know when someone's kind of just BSing me. And I don't mean like you're BSing me like you're trying to pull one over on me, but I think you're like, holy shit, how do I answer this? I'll just give them a number. Can I give you a daily schedule I'd like you to follow? Okay. Okay, and by the way, the very last session tomorrow, and heads up guys, tomorrow is I'm gonna help you get wealthy. Who wants to get wealthy, ladies and gentlemen? Can I get an eye on that? And I don't know what that number is for you, but I got one of my friends who's worth $25 million and has been selling real estate for like 30 plus years. And you know, there's nothing that sucks about being worth $25 million and being a real estate agent. There's nothing about that sucks. He can, fly, he can travel flying privately. He's got second homes, like all from his real estate business following the same things I'm gonna talk about tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. But I will tell you what we're gonna finish with tomorrow is the most important checklists you need to be following on a daily, weekly, and monthly basis. The most important checklist on a daily and weekly, monthly basis. So Catherine, if you go on vacation, do you just say, okay, we're leaving tomorrow. I'm just making this up like in the good old days when we could travel for fun. I'm leaving tomorrow and I'm going to Tokyo and I'm gonna to go on a sushi binge trip. 
Do you leave the next day without a checklist of what to pack, what to wear, what to bring? Do you, do you not make up any list of all the things that need to be done in your business? Or do you do the opposite? Do you make a list of everything you need to get ready for? And do you make up a list probably two weeks prior of everything that needs to get done in your business before you go away? Which one do you do? No list or list? List. List, right? Everybody does that. And yet, the cardinal sin that people make is they leave a conference like this and they forget the golden rule. If I can create a checklist of the most important activities that will move my business forward and then I put it in my phone into a schedule, I am more inclined to do the things that give me the power. So, for example, I'd want you to have some kind of morning routine, whatever that means to you. I, did you guys all enjoy Joseph yesterday, Joseph McClendon, right? Just the, you know, what do you do in the morning? I put a smile on my face and I drink some water and I think about what I'm grateful for and then I start my day. It doesn't have to be complicated. The second thing I want you to exercise because I can see you do that, I love it. But when you start getting into the work mode, here's what I want. I want you to first and foremost, so get ready to write. I want you to write this down. So you ready? I want you to study the MLS for 15 or 20 minutes every day. I want you to study the market for 15 or 20 minutes every day. And I want you to dig in like that artisan who wants to know it like Tim Smith. Catherine, Tim Smith can tell you every sale that's happened, whether he was involved or not. So when someone says to him, how's the market? He literally becomes like the Terminator, seeing everything through, you know, the grids, because he's got that kind of market research in his head. But it came from everyday discipline, looking at the market. Number two, you ready? I want you from there to go right after your hottest leads. The buyers and sellers that are interested in doing something right away. You want to know why? Because you can get a quick dopamine rush from getting an appointment with someone that already said, yeah, I want to find a house, help me buy, we're still thinking about selling. And even if the appointment is light and lame, it's better than no appointment. Either the appointment is just like, hey, why don't we just do a Zoom session and let's do a buyer consultation. Has anybody taken the time? Even if it's that, it's a quick win and now you're like, now I'm hot. Then I want you to talk to five people inside your database. Five every day. Catherine, I do not see you writing. Thank you. Five people every day in your database. Checking in. How you doing? What's shaking bacon? What are you guys doing for the holidays? And then remember the script I gave you, the three things? Is your interest rate at the ideal percentage for the dream or the goals you guys have for your property? It isn't. Let's discuss it. The very last one, are you living in the ideal home? Go ahead. You with me, Catherine? Yep. Okay. Number next, I want you to talk to five people you don't know every day. Now, your original question was knocking on doors. So do you want to go knock on doors? Do you want to make phone calls? Or do you want to go into your database and find every person you have no idea who they are in your database and call them? You with me? Because I'm not going to say it's a cold call. Somehow they got into your database. They went to your website. You met them at an open house. You bought some online leads. You with me? Warm them up. So that's your four, five, five in reverse. Then from there, I want you to shoot a video about everything you did in the morning and document the journey. Do that for the next, I don't know, 75 days between now and the end of the year and watch what happens. Get up, do a morning routine, get to the office, study the market. By the way, all of you, look up here, all of you. Hey, one of my daily disciplines is I analyze the market for my buyers and sellers, helping them pinpoint with accuracy, just like a, you would hire a stockbroker to say, what stock should I be buying today? I'm doing that for my buying clients. So I look inside the MLS and I'm analyzing what's moving, what's not, what price points, what's good, what's hot, what neighborhoods are right. And then some people say, find me the, and I'm literally just, I'm filming me looking at the MLS, right? This is what we do. This is how I do my business. I analyze it. You shoot a video on that. Then you make your calls. And then you shoot a video and say, hey, I just talked to 15 people trying to help them discover, is their home COVID friendly, blah, 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 whatever it is. You do that for 75 or 80 days. That's 14 conversations a day and setting the market in a morning routine and you will kill it. I promise. You up for that? Can I throw one more on top on your checklist? 
Okay. Can I throw one more? Okay. Sure. How, how many people do you have in your database? Approximately. 2,000. Oh, gee, many. And what email service provider do you use? How often do you send emails to your database? Lion's Dex. And I've, Perfect. I just started, yeah. Okay. Videos. Okay, so with Bomb, Bomb I'm assuming, because like that's their game. So consider this, you ready? You're doing the videos, right? You're sending out emails, that's awesome. Now, all I want you to be thinking about is, I've got 2,000 people. I'm now going to send every one of them the text that I showed you yesterday in the morning. Hey, Catherine, the real estate market is emoji. Banana, 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 banana. You with me? The bananas are very intentional, my friends, because I get that text and what do I see? Seven bananas and I'm like, seven bananas? What's that? That's the hook. Now I'm looking. Now I'm reading your text. And you saw the results that Robert Mack and so many others have got from that. That would be the other thing I would add. Don't do a mass text everybody because you won't be able to handle all the inbound. Do 10 texts a day and do that between now and the end of the year. And I promise you, the next time I see you this way or another way, you're gonna be like, OMG, TF, you're, you have no idea. I did it and I killed it. Mary Angel, who's out here, I did something similar with her a couple years ago. And you know what? I said, do 100 appointments. And if you do it, I'll give you 10,000 bucks. And you know what she did to get her final 16 appointments? how resourceful this crazy woman is. She started calling people at her church and saying, hey, look, I got a crazy bet with this guy, Tom Ferry from California. He told me if I could talk to 100 people about selling their house, even if you don't want to, I just got to show up and do a presentation. If I can do it, I'm going to get to 10,000 and I'm going to keep some, maybe donate to the church, whatever. And she went on 16 BS appointments to win the bet, Mary Angel. I love you. You know, I'm not calling you out. We did a video on this. And one of the people said, this is great because I want to sell. If you put yourself out there enough, good things are going to happen. Shake the tree every day, somewhere in Apple Falls. That's how it works. Does that make sense? Catherine, are you in? I'm in. You promise? Yes. Yeah. Pinky? Don't leave me Thank hanging. You. All right. Give Catherine a huge round of applause, ladies and gentlemen. Love it. Love it, love it, love it, love it, love it.